Hello, and thank you for joining our interview series for the Baltimore Economic Leadership League, also known as Bell. I'm your host, Renard Brown, and I'm currently serving as the Executive Director for Bell. Bell is a nonprofit community development financial institution designed to support small women, minority and rural businesses, and capital microlending, providing business resources and education, and creating a vibrant community for businesses to network. Please visit our site at joinbell.org to learn more. These interview sessions are designed to get to know our members as well as our board members and to gain valuable perspectives and key insights from these business experts. With that, I'd like to dive right in and introduce our guest, Michelle Howard. Michelle is an Thank experienced you. program director with a demonstrated history of working in the government transportation industry, as well as extensive experience with small and minority entrepreneurs and strategic planning. Ms. Howard, thank you for the opportunity to meet with you today. Thank you, Raynard. I really appreciate this opportunity. Absolutely. Absolutely. Let's jump right into the interview. Just a few questions. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me a little bit about your background and how you came to be a director at uh, the Washington Metropolitan Area Transit Authority? Well, my background actually starts with the military, um, the U.S. Army to be exact. So I started out cool. um, my career in the, in the U.S. military, um, wearing Army green. Okay. <laughs> so okay. proud to say that. Um, I spent most of my military career in Germany. Um, I also um, stayed in Germany. Once I got out of the military, I stayed in Germany to work for Lockheed Martin. Mm -hmm. Um, then I came back to the U.S. So when I came back to the U.S., I worked for the Maryland Department of Transportation, and I was working in logistics and procurement. So I left from the Maryland Department of Transportation and went over to the Maryland Transportation Authority. And I actually started with the police side of the agency as their director of the quartermaster. So I did a lot of work there, and then a position opened up on the civilian side of the agency, and um, I interviewed and became the chief of the Minority Enterprise Business Program. So once I left there, um, I, I, I decided that, you know, I really want to get deeper into minority business. So I didn't leave there, I'm sorry. I stayed there and I worked my way up the ranks until I became the director of civil rights and fair practices. And during that time, I had the opportunity to learn more about, about small businesses, their struggles, as well as the things that they celebrated, you know, when they had wins and things of that sort. Um, I oversaw the MBE program there the Disadvantaged Business Program, the Veterans Program, and the Small Business Reserve. And then the mix into that was the EEO, Equal Opportunity Program, as well as the Title VI Program, um, Civil Rights Act of 1964. So I really honed a lot of my skills there. And I was able to travel because I was part of an organization called Comto and I was working with the national board. So I was able to travel to other states and actually help the chapters um, when it came to small business issues and you know, advisement. I retired from there. And shortly after retirement, that's when I came to WMATA. And so it has been such a excellent whirlwind being here to um, bring my expertise dealing with small businesses and to help them and to bring new programs to Wilmot. So I'm really happy about that. Okay, wow, what, a, what an incredible story. And that's quite a journey you took. <laughs> huh? It is, you know, it's a whole lot more to it, but that's like summarizing in a nutshell. But the journey has been such a passionate one um, because I've learned so much from the business side. And, you know, that became part of the reason why I have stayed strong in the industry. Um, let me ask you this. What, I'm sure you're very well read with so much education and so many varied experiences. What book have you read that's been the most impactful to you and why? So, actually, I have two books okay. that I actually keep on my desk, right? All right. <laughs> I'm going to show you. Okay. I have two books. I have these two books here. You probably can't see them. Um, but these two books, um, one is called The Servant. And it's about servant leadership. It's by James Hunter. And it's like a simple story, you know, about the actual essence 
of leadership and what that really means in the sacrifices that leaders make for their people, wow. right? Um, and the other one is called the inspirational leader and that's by Gifford Thomas. And what that does, it inspires leaders um, to believe that they can do anything and they can motivate their team to do the impossible, right? Because it gives you inspiration from other leaders and other stories, right? And so those are the two that I keep on my desk because I find myself referencing back um, when I wanna come up with something different, when I wanna think out of the box, um, when I wanna ask myself, um, what is my checkoff list in being such a good leader? How do I make myself better on a regular basis? How do I meet my staff where they are, empower them, teach them, coach them, and to make them better in what they want to do in their career? Aaron, in terms of both on the leader side and then the servant side and how one sort of reinforces the other. That's, that's, yes. That's, that's, yes. Really, that's really insightful. Um, what interested you the most about uh, being, a, being a, a part of the Baltimore Economic Leadership League? You know, I'm going to tell you, I got excited about it, right? Because <laughs> it's, it's, it's part of my passion. It's about their values and the compassion um, for supporting small businesses um, to be successful, right? Because the struggle is the financial for small businesses. Right. Especially when they're starting out, they're getting their feet wet. Um, they're trying to expand the different areas of their business. Um, this is just such a big deal. I call Bell a big deal. Yeah. Um, it's a breakthrough in helping um, small businesses. So anything that helps them to be successful, I get excited about. Okay. Okay. Well, being you know a part of Bell myself, I'm very excited to hear you say that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, what advice would you give to someone seeking to work in your field? And then what's some career advice or pitfalls that you would recommend that they look out for and avoid? Well, I'm going to tell you, this, this field, it's, it's not easy. Okay. So I would say that um, you have to love what you do. Um, you have to have passion about the industry. Um, and you have to have compassion and be willing to fight the good fight um, because there will be losses, right? Mm -hmm. But always celebrate the wins. Celebrate the wins because they become very important to you and to the companies who are winning, you know? Um, pitfalls is when you are trying to work within policies and guidelines of government sometimes, you know? Um, pitfalls can be when you are trying to educate or learn about the different processes and procedures in procurement because they're not all the same. And so that part can be a little hard. Fair enough. Fair enough. I think that's pretty good, well-rounded advice. Um, and when you look at your industry as a whole, what are some of the modern trends that you see happening? You know, I'm going to tell you, I was so impressed with some of the small businesses during the pandemic mm -hmm. because they reinvented themselves, right? And they did that because I call it survival skills. Survival skills. They were able to um, look around, you know, all the PPE was coming about and they were able to transition to help with that during the pandemic which really helped a lot of them to survive and not fall under. And when you can trigger and make a turn like that, wow, that speaks a lot for the business owner and the strategic, um, the strategic objectives that they put into place to help their business to survive hard times. And I know they can't do it by themselves. So just the fact that they were able to maneuver to get help or assistance in doing so, I think that's a, that's a big deal. Okay. Yeah, definitely uh, COVID has changed a whole lot for everybody, right? Really uh, yes. a once in an epoch uh, type of change. 
Uh, let's yeah. round it out with this. What's a favorite quote or saying that you'd like to, to share with our listeners and why is it important to you? I always tell my staff, um, believe in the power of we. Wow, okay. Believe in the power of we because it takes a team. You know, you, you can't do it alone on the island, right? It really does take a team. It takes teamwork. And you can accomplish so much when you come together. So I always say, believe in the power of we. You know, every time we get a win, I said, believe in the power of we, because we did that. We did that together. You know, even when we lose, we lose together. But then I say, so how do we recover? How do we recover? So believe in the power of we. Yeah, I think tying together that that uh, team team and teaming approach uh, with celebrating wins is really critical, right? Mm -hmm. And building momentum as a as a as a servant leader. So that's excellent. That's excellent. I see how you brought it all together there. I see you really do know what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> no, look, a little something something i'm a little something something <laughs> you really do know what you're doing well that ends our interview today michelle and i'd like to thank you very much for your time thank you so much reno i have a great rest of your day absolutely you too on behalf of the baltimore economic leadership league at joinbell.org uh thanks again and everybody make it a great day mm -hmm.